Welcome to this service of prayer during the day for Sunday the 15th of November. This is our second uh, Sunday of second lockdown and the church is open for private prayer so you can go in between 9.30 and 12 on a Sunday for some silence, to pray, to light a candle, to be still. These services online will continue as they have done since March. And my apologies, the service I'm about to deliver might not be exactly what I sent out to the parish in October. Um, my computer had a funny five moments uh, minutes and overwrote this service with last week's. So there's a bit of guesswork going on, but we're going to pray it. So let us pray. O oh God, make speed to save us. O oh Lord, make haste to help us. To you, O oh Lord, I lift up my soul. O oh my God, in you I trust. So there might have been a hymn here, I think there was. Uh, but they're long readings, so we're going to hear a, pa a passage from the Gloria. Glory to God in the highest, and peace to his people on earth. Lord God, heavenly King, almighty God and Father. We worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Now we've got two longish readings today. The first is from 1 Thessalonians and the second is from Matthew 25. The Thessalonians reading is about waiting and being alert and ready for when Christ comes. The second is in a similar theme. It's about judgment and it's between two other parables about judgment so I think it's fairly safe, safe to say that it's about judgment and it's the parable of the talents and as you read as I read it bear in mind that a talent is about 15 years wages it's a lot of money so super abundance of cash so two readings one about waiting for Christ to return and the second, as a parable, can be read about, well, what will happen in that judgment when Christ returns? And that's not an easy thing for us to reflect on. And I listened to a couple of bishops discussing this. And you can read the parable of the talents as about how we use the money we have. Do we use it for our own selfish ends or do we use it to promote, to make visible the kingdom of God in however we do that? That's quite a concrete way of doing, of thinking about the parable. Another way of thinking about the parable might be to use the word talent as we do in English, as our gifts. How do we use our gifts? And one suggestion was that we, that burying the talents could be seen to be lack of confidence, to being scared. And although that's understandable, to how do we have the confidence to be bold, to use the gifts we have in the furtherance of God's kingdom? So I'm sure you've heard other sermons, but on this matter. But as we read it today in November 2020, what in these two quite hard passages does the Spirit raise up for you? What words jump out? What thoughts are there? And we'll take that into prayer. So the first reading from 1 Thessalonians. Now concerning the times and seasons, brothers and sisters, you do, not need, you do not need to have anything written to you, for you yourselves know very well that the day of the Lord will come like a thief in the night. When they say there is peace and security, then sudden destruction will come among them as labour pains come upon a pregnant woman, and there will be no escape. But you, beloved, are not in darkness, 
for that day to surprise you like a thief, for you are all children of light and the children of day. We are not of the night or darkness. So then let us not fall asleep as others do, but let us keep awake and sober, for those who sleep sleep at night, and those who are drunk get drunk at night. But since we belong to the day, let us be sober and put on the breastplate of faith and love, and for a helmet the hope of salvation. For God has destined us not for wrath, but for obtaining salvation through our Lord Jesus Christ, who died for us, so that whether we are awake or asleep, we may live with him. Therefore, encourage one another and build up each other, as indeed you are doing. So if Fleur lets me, Matthew 25, 14 to 30, the parable of the talents. For it is if a man going on a journey summoned his slaves and entrusted his property to them. To one he gave five talents, to another two, to another one, each according to his ability. Then he went away. The one who had received five talents went off at once and traded with them and made five more talents. In the same way, the one who had two talents made two more talents. But the one who had received one talent went off and dug a hole in the ground and hid his master's money. After a long time, the master of those slaves came and settled accounts with them. Then the one who had received the five talents came forward, bringing five more talents, saying, Master, you handed over to me five talents. See, I have made five more talents. His master said to him, Well done, good and trustworthy slave. You have been trustworthy in a few things. I will put you in charge of many things. Enter into the joy of your master. And the one who had two talents also came forward, saying, Master, you handed over to me two talents. See, I made two more talents. His master said to him, Well done, good and trustworthy slave. You have been trustworthy in a few things. I will put you in charge of many things. Enter into the joy of your master. Then the one who had received one talent also came forward, saying, Master, I knew that you were a harsh man, reaping where you did not sow and gathering where you did not scatter seed. So I was afraid, and I went and hid your talent in the ground. Here have what is yours. But his master replied, You wicked and lazy slave. You knew, did you not, that I reap where I do not sow and I gather where I did not scatter? Then you ought to have invested my money with the bankers and on my return I would have received what was my own with interest. So take the talent with him, so take the talent from him and give it to one with ten talents. For all those who have more will be given and they and they will have an abundance but from those who have nothing, even what they have will be taken away. As for this worthless slave, throw him out into the darkness, where there shall be weeping and gnashing of teeth. So let's reflect on what that reading brought up for us. Let us pray. In this difficult, complicated, unsettling time of second lockdown, we bring before you our uncertainties, our fears, our worries. We bring before you those which are real, and those which we're less sure are real and perhaps are in our imaginations. Help us to live in the present. 
help us to take care and to be safe. Protect us from rumination and doom-mongering. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for confidence. We pray that in these dark times we will hold on to your light. We pray that we will be bold with the gifts you have given us, the super abundance of your love and kindness and mercy. And we pray for the confidence to live our lives in that super abundance of your grace. We pray that those worries and concerns that hold us back, we can put them down and sit in your grace, recovering, being filled and going out and sharing your goodness and kindness and justice and mercy. Whether that's online or a smile with the eyes with the people we meet. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. As we watch and wait for a vaccine, for treatments for coronavirus, we give you thanks for all of those working to find a vaccine, to find treatments, for all of those in our hospitals and clinics. We pray for strength, for courage, for perseverance. We pray for those who are managing in our national government, local government and hospitals, our national health service. We pray for those who have that strategic, those strategic decisions and that in all that they do, they put those who are poor, who are ill, who are marginalised ahead of those who have much. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for those who are sick. We pray for those who are worried about operations being cancelled or frightened to go to hospital or uh, the GP with a niggling worry. We pray for all of those who are bereaved at this time, for those organising funerals. We pray for all of those who are worried about Christmas and how they will celebrate with the restrictions that may or may not be in place. We pray for those who are mourning the empty chair at the Christmas table. Lord, bring your healing, your compassion. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And so we bring our prayers together, wherever we are, with whichever version or language with which you would say the Lord's Prayer. So please join me. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory for ever and ever. Amen. And so our prayer is is a poem by Jean Murdoch, As a Net. Help us to realise that we are part of each other, part of the whole world entwined as a net. Broaden our thinking, strengthen our imagination. Make us aware that both in giving and taking we are part of the whole. 
in our hands is the ability to destroy or to build up. Help us to make our choices wisely. Amen. So may you have a blessed week and we'll see you soon. God bless.